Some Ukrainian drone units operate more like tech startups than traditional military units playing a vital role in defending the country. As the Wall Street Journal reports, today's drone operators are becoming the most effective soldiers, often operating in ways that are very different from the military's norm. For example, the Clear Eyes drone battalion began as a group of civilian enthusiasts who used commercial drones to monitor Russian troops. The battalion now has engineering workshops, training courses for operators and even a recreation area. In the field, they modernize old ammunition, creating new types of weapons for drones. The battalion's leader, 37-year-old marketer Georgi Volkov, approaches running the unit like a startup, with an emphasis on innovation and efficient logistics. He stresses, one good pilot doesn't change anything. We are a team of civilians who want to destroy the enemy with ingenuity and technology. Most of the fighters in these units have not served in the army before and do not observe traditional military formalities. Since the start of the full-scale invasion in 2022, Ukraine has been actively using drones, striking Russian ammunition depots and energy infrastructure facilities. In particular, naval drones have forced the Russian Black Sea Fleet to change its deployment, and Dragon drones have brought additional fear into the ranks of Russian soldiers. The Wall Street Journal also cited the example of Alexander Dakno, a 29-year-old former co-working space executive who is now a drone pilot who has killed nearly 300 Russian soldiers in a year and a half. In October, President Zelensky announced that Ukraine could produce up to 4 million drones a year, effectively creating a new defense industry in the face of constant Russian attacks. In June, the Times reported that Ukraine was developing a swarm of drones that could attack targets without a pilot, noting that the drones would be able to interact with each other and fight as a team. On the eve, demonstration tests of Ukrainian weapons developments were conducted in Ukraine. In particular, seven companies presented developments in the drone swarm technology. Earlier, military expert Valentin Badrak, more and more FPV drones on fiber optics are appearing on the front. They are indeed resistant to electronic warfare, but are unlikely to become something revolutionary due to the nuances of their use. They can only be used over a very short distance. The agreement between the North Korea and Russia to send North Korean troops provides for bilateral benefits. In particular, Russia allegedly pledged to pay high salaries to the military, reports the Korean Herald. Korean MP Wee Sung Luk, who was Seoul's ambassador to Russia, said in a commentary to the Korea Herald that joining the war against Ukraine was not a bad deal at all for North Korea. According to him, the financial and food crisis in the North Korea are largely resolved thanks to Russian compensation for its contribution to the military effort against Ukraine. According to North Korean intelligence, in exchange for the North Korean military, Russia has pledged to supply 600 to 700,000 tons of rice per year to the North Korea, pay $2,000 salaries to North Korean soldiers involved in the war against Ukraine, and share space technology. Moreover, the countries agreed to involve Russia in combat operations on the Korean peninsula in the event of war. Recently, the world was shocked by the information that North Korea sent thousands of its military personnel to Russia. Ukrainian intelligence reports that their number may reach more than 10,000. The Financial Times noted that some North Korean soldiers are already in the Kursk region of Russia, about 50 kilometers from the border with Ukraine. In response, South Korea announced the possibility of increasing military support for Ukraine. Seoul also emphasized that the North Korea has requested Russian technologies related to tactical nuclear weapons. If North Korean soldiers go into Ukraine, it would be the first time a third country puts boots on the ground in the war. Other countries on both sides of the divide have sent military aid, including weapons and training. Iran has supplied Russia with drones and Western nations have provided Ukraine with modern weapons and financial and humanitarian assistance. The United States say some of those troops have already moved near Ukraine's border in the Kursk region, where Moscow's forces have struggled to push back a Ukrainian incursion.
We've not yet seen these troops deploy into combat against Ukrainian forces, but we would expect that to happen in the coming days, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said at a news conference with Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin and their South Korean counterparts. Blinken said Russia has been training North Korean soldiers in artillery, drones and basic infantry operations, including trench clearing, indicating that they fully intend to use these forces in frontline operations. Ukraine is preparing as though combating North Korea in its territory is inevitable. Thousands of North Korean troops are currently concentrated in the Kursk region and are expected to join the fight in the coming days to bolster the Russian army. But the Ukrainian military will also receive important aid to counter the Russian onslaught. The latest aid package from the U.S. includes at least 212 striker armored vehicles. As Forbes analyst David Axe notes, most of the strikers transferred to Ukraine are already in the Kursk region, so it is likely that additional vehicles will also be transferred to this area. As the analyst explains, taking into account the loss of about two dozen strikers in combat, the new delivery from the US will increase the number of these armored vehicles in the Ukrainian armed forces to almost 400. At the same time, Ukraine usually distributes them among assault brigades three battalions with 31 vehicles in each brigade. Previous batches of strikers were enough to equip the 80th and 82nd Assault Brigades, which in early August allocated battalions for the invasion of Kursk. The 3rd Assault Brigade, the 95th, is also in Kursk, and it does not yet have these vehicles. The analyst notes, emphasizing that it makes sense to equip this brigade now in order to equalize its forces with the other two. The maneuverable striker, with its top speed of 60 miles per hour, is well suited to the chaotic urban combat and rapid road assaults that characterize the fighting in the Kursk region. In addition to being fast and maneuverable, the vehicle is a good observation and firing platform for top-mounted sensors and weapons, Axe said. At the same time, he added that in conditions of an acute shortage of people, the new strikers are most likely the only assistance that the Ukrainian military in the Kursk region will receive. According to Ukrainian intelligence, Russia has deployed more than 7,000 North Korean troops to the borders of Ukraine. It is noted that they were armed, in particular with 60mm mortars and AK-12 assault rifles. At the end of October, the U.S. State Department announced that there were about 10,000 North Korean troops in Russia, of which about 8,000 were in the Kursk region. It was then reported that this contingent could take part in combat operations in the coming days. As stated by the commander of the 24th Separate Assault Brigade, Aidar Stanislav Bunyatov, Russian troops have reduced their activity in the Kursk region. This may be due to the regrouping of troops and the entry of North Korean soldiers into positions.